logging in mountain forests, a demanding and dangerous job for man and machine. On an exposed saddle around 1,000 meters above sea level, Markus Schlögelhofer and his team have set up a mountain harvester, a combination of harvester and cableway system. Basically, this is the only option for transporting the timber, damaged by wind and bark beetle, to the road in such difficult terrain. We are spending the day filming these intrepid men as they go about their work. We are in the Eisenwetzen Nature Reserve, which lies on the boundary of three Austrian states, Styria, Lower and Upper Austria. The landscape is characterized by vast, often unexplored forests, punctured by steep, craggy summits. A remote and very wild region in the center of the northern limestone Alps. We had a hair-raising drive along 16 kilometers of forest track to reach our filming location in Gescheit, here, between Gamstein and Stumpfmauer, the logging team has set up the mountain harvester. The machine was purchased over a year ago by the Drier Forestry Office, which manages over 6,000 hectares of forest in this region and is a strong advocate for forest-friendly management. A large forest holding, predominantly steep terrain and an increasing amount of damaged timber create the ideal conditions for exploiting the full potential of this very efficient harvesting system. The landowner prefers to use his own machinery because, as he explains, it keeps the value added within the company and allows him to operate independently of external forestry contractors. The machine is deployed all year round and spends 80% of the time in this area. It is operated by Markus Schlugelhofer from Klein Rifling. He was a self-employed forestry contractor for 20 years before taking on a permanent position with Drier. The Mountain Harvester, a TST 600, is manufactured by TST Zalga Eta Trustral GmbH, better known as TST Forestry. The small family-run business from Turnitz in Lower Austria is known for constructing very practical, robust forestry equipment without electronic gimmickry. This is precisely what appeals to Markus Schlugelhofer. I can tell you, it's worth its weight in gold. Before this, I had a TST 800, which ran for 10 years without a hitch. When I sold it, apart from some paint damage, it was working just as well as it did on the first day. It's very robustly redesigned, which is really important for us. We haul huge trees downhill. And if anything falls, we can't have everything buckling and breaking. I think they get it just right. Today, we are yarding downhill in a very challenging section with a 400 meter span, although this system could handle up to 650 meters. The carrier vehicle is a fir green Mercedes Benz Arox 8x6 with 450 horsepower. It has six hydraulic stabilizers to keep the truck stable and folding sidewalls to protect it from falling rocks and stumps. This is important because downhill yarding is fraught with danger. When yarding downhill, you have to check that the pulleys are intact and that the cable is running freely and not catching anywhere because then you can lose traction or damage the cable. It's bad news if the cable breaks because then the carriage falls down and you really don't want that to happen. It's got a built-in safety mechanism. If it travels faster than 12 meters per second, it clamps itself to the cable. But we don't rely on that. And you need to check that the anchor trees hold up and are well secured or retain them with straps. Otherwise, the whole thing can come down, endangering the chocker man and the chainsaw operator. It's extremely hazardous. And of course, you must make sure you're not standing in the fall line with the machine. It looks very tidy here on the plateau. There's plenty of space. All the equipment is within easy reach. The tower is hydraulically telescoping. It is connected to the chassis by two hydraulic rams, one below the frame and one at the rear to offset the tilt of the vehicle. A powerful hydraulic motor with transmission drives the two drums for the 700-meter skyline and 1,400-meter mainline. 
Mr. Mountain Harvester has become established as the ideal solution for forest-friendly logging on extreme slopes. To understand how it works, let's take a closer look at a run. Marcus can operate the cable line system from the crane cab. He uses the automatic target control to send the carriage back up to the exact position of the last loading point. Then, the choker man takes over control of the carriage with a remote radio control. He puts the choker around the log, attaches it to the skidding line, then presses a button to start reeling it in. The trunks are hauled up to the carriage, which automatically transports them down to the road, where Marcus takes over again. Once he has the carriage in the right position, he lowers the timber onto the landing platform. Marcus likes simple, straightforward technology, which does what it should. He doesn't mind getting down from the cab to release the timber each time. He made a conscious decision not to have radio chokers. He doesn't need them, it's just something else to maintain that would eventually break. He even rejected air conditioning, preferring instead just to open the side door. Marcus sends the carriage back up while he gets on with processing the logs. The carriage is suspended from the skyline and pulled up and down by the two other lines. Active traction in both directions facilitates work in flat sections and makes downhill yarding possible in the first place. When the carriage reaches its target position, it clamps itself hydraulically to the skyline. At the same time, a disc brake is released on the cable drum, which has three compartments. Pulling the whole back line unwinds the skidding line and winds the main line into the carriage, like the cable ejection on a tractor winch. So the choker man can easily pull the skidding line over to the felled trees, an ingeniously simple solution. Marcus can see other benefits too. The good thing about this system is that you have a separate skidding line. You get 80 meters, which is usually more than enough, and it means that the main line never gets damaged and never gets shorter, so it lasts for ages before you have to replace it. The carriage is not motorized. It's light, so you can quickly send it across to the opposite side of the slope, as we've done here, 400 meters up, and you don't even need to hang rigging up on the anchor tree. So you don't have to carry up all the extra gear. Yes, there are huge advantages. The carriage has a built-in transmission. The lever action of the drum changes depending on how much line has been unwound or rewound. The more line is paid out, the stronger the pulling force. This physical fact is certainly advantageous when it comes to moving large trees. The carriage operates without a combustion or electric motor. Its simple, lightweight construction minimizes wear and maintenance costs and even insurance costs. It's not unusual for insurance companies to assess carriages according to their complexity. The more complex it is, the more can go wrong. The tree felling today is being done by Hermann Schönlechner, who is also an experienced forestry worker. In this job, where danger lurks around every corner, skill and experience can be a lifesaver. It's most dangerous when dry, withered sections snap off at the top and fall down right where you're standing. It's difficult to deal with wind-thrown trees because they may be under considerable tension, which makes them unpredictable. You have to be able to assess the direction of tension in the tree. Then you can work out where to make the first cut. Each tree is different, and I always say it's better to look twice and cut once. You need to take your time and not get distracted. Safety is the number one priority at Drear. Safety before speed. The jagged limestone pinnacles of the Gamstein Tower in the background, a distinctive mountain, which at 1,774 meters marks the highest point in the Eisenwurzen Nature Reserve. On the horizon, you can make out the Gezoiza Mountains, still covered in snow at this time of year. Flying over these spectacularly jagged crags, we get a striking bird's eye view of our workplace. With a drag force of 3.5 tonnes, the TST 600 is the third largest mountain harvester for TST forestry. 
It's a strong tower yarder, but not too heavy. The manufacturer describes it as the light version of a large diameter timber tower yarder. It's suitable for both thinning and final felling. The ideal machine for Dreher's forestry operations, as Markus Schlögelhofer explains. We have a lot of thinning and clearing to do. The mature trees are almost all damaged, and so the TST 600, the attractive force of 3.5 tons, is ideal. We don't need anything bigger. The 600 meter range is sufficient. I think we can say that our business is well equipped now. I really like the mountain harvester. It doesn't take long to pack it up and transfer it to a new location. You don't need a truck or a low loader. You drive 60 to 70 kilometers per hour along the road. You have all your gear with you and you just set it up again. One major advantage of these types of cable yarder is the gentle handling of the harvested timber, which appears to almost float out of the forest. What I like about this forest-friendly harvesting is that the forest roads don't get damaged. All you have to do is clear them of bark, mulch, branches and so on afterwards. The roads don't get potholed, scraped or soiled during forest operations. And no damage is done to the standing timber either. No tracks are left behind where water can run off for years afterwards. It just does a tidy job. And that's really important to me. TST currently offers five cable yarding systems with corresponding carriages. Each machine is custom built so the customer gets exactly what they want even down to the color, yellow in this case. The smallest model is the TST Junior, a three-point hitch machine which we demonstrated in spring when we filmed forestry contractor Hari Polyaros. You can find the video on our YouTube channel. Back to Marcus, who is now processing the felled timber. The trunks are delimbed and cut to the right length in a single operation. So, now I'm going to show you how the machine works and how the harvester head processes the timber. These two levers control the harvester head. Now I'm moving it along two meters because it's crooked at the front. We'll cut off these two meters here for the paper industry. Then I press automatic mode and it automatically moves along four meters. And then I activate the main saw with my thumb. When I press automatic mode again, it travels all the way back and tidily removes all the limbs. After that, we start again in automatic mode and move the main saw to exactly 4.1 meters. You can see the length and diameter here on the screen. The Timbernator Sexig H Harvester Head, also from TST Forestry, can de-limb and cut trunks up to 60 centimeters in diameter. The grapple opens much wider. The most striking feature is the chain belt, which feeds the timber through the de-limbing blades. The large contact area ensures reliable feed with low contact pressure. TST Forestry made a conscious decision not to use rollers, which makes the head very compact. Marcus would not like to be without this equipment. Well, first of all, it's very robust, you can tell straight away. The powerful grapples hold it securely. The double knives delimb the timber cleanly, from large diameters to small. It works extremely well. It has a decent feeding force, as you can see. It handles large trunks just as easily as smaller ones, especially ones with the top still on. It works very well with this. A useful detail is the top saw behind the delimbing blades. You can use it to trim off unwanted ends without having to change the grip. For even greater flexibility, TST now supplies the Timbernator with a continuous rotator on request. Marcus operates the harvester head with a fast and powerful Epsilon crane, which can be controlled with great precision. It has a range of 9.4 meters and a lifting torque of 28 metric tons. You can see what this hydraulic arm is actually capable of when Marcus is sorting all the heavy trunks. Depending on the length of the yarding line and the diameter of the wood, the team can handle between 60 and 70 cubic meters a day. 
Markus Schlogelhofer tells us that when everything comes together just right, they can even manage 120 cubic meters, and that's in just one eight-hour shift. But you can hardly expect these men to do this demanding work for any longer than that at one stretch. At the Drier Forestry Company, safety is paramount, a philosophy that Marcus is in complete agreement with. That's why he never pushes the machine right up to its limit. We don't haul too much at once. We don't always hang as much on the line as it can take. It's not worth the risk. It's better to hang a bit less and know that it's always running smoothly and reliably. Marcus must be able to rely on his equipment. Otherwise, it simply wouldn't be profitable to harvest in such remote areas. He has been working with the TST 600 for over a year now without any major incidents. The machine is simple, robust and reliable. You can fix a lot yourself. It's beautifully engineered. You can take it anywhere. And that's just a massive advantage. It saves us time and money. Engineering is one thing. Customer care is quite another. With TST Forestry, Marcus feels he's in good hands. Everyone listens carefully to what you've got to say. If you have a special request, they try to implement it, and that's invaluable. We have a really good working relationship. They don't say, actually, we're not interested in what you've got to say. Instead, they take you very seriously and try to implement your ideas and make further improvements. That's what I appreciate most. Working in this sort of terrain takes its toll on the men. So it's not surprising that it's getting harder and harder to find suitable people to take on this work. What are the ideal qualifications for this job? Motivation is important for me. You have to have the right attitude and enjoy being in the forest and being outdoors. That's actually the most important thing for me. Everything else you can learn. You need to be reasonably fit too. You're clambering around the whole time. You should feel comfortable in this environment well away from the road. You shouldn't be afraid of it. If you look up and get scared, then it's not the job for you. Your feet shouldn't be sore and you need to be resilient and physically fit. But it's still an interesting and exciting job. I'd miss it if I stopped doing it. It's precisely these challenges which make this job so special for Marcus and his team. When the sun is shining and you're surrounded by the mountains, there's nowhere I'd rather be than here in the forest. I like being outdoors, and it doesn't bother me if the weather sometimes isn't very good. Even when it's raining, I don't mind. There's a special kind of peace here which I love. Some people climb mountains to find it, but we have it every day. When you see what you've done at the end of the day, when you see this huge pile of timber, it's fantastic to think that you've done all that, that you've done a really good job. I love the challenges. Life would be boring without challenges. Where can I find an anchor? Will it hold? How do I rig up the system so that it stays put without taking any risks? Where shall I run the skyline corridor? And what about the next one? And then there's a rock in the way, just where you want to fix it. The more clambering around I have to do, the more I like it. I like this job. What could be better than turning your vocation into a career? So, viewers, give us a like if you too share this passion for forestry. We're always out and about with our camera, filming more fantastic machines and fascinating topics for you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell if you don't want to miss another video.